Hey, what's up guys? This is Java Puppy. Welcome to the second tutorial on data structures in Java. This video is going to be mainly about what an abstract data type is, but we will also touch on other concepts like information hiding, inheritance, abstraction, and polymorphism. I think it is very important to talk about what an ADT is and data types in general before we actually go into data structures because this is really foundational to all data structures. And by the way, when I talk about definitions of some of these keywords, I want to clarify that the definitions of these words depend largely on the context around which these words are being used. So the way I define these words can be a little bit different from other definitions. But for us, we're using these words in the context of Java. So before we even go into what an ADT is, I would like to do a quick review on data types. In Java, there are eight primitive data types, which are byte, short, int, long, float, double, car, and boolean. These are predefined by Java, and these data types only contain simple values. One of the coolest things in Java is that with classes, we can create our own data type like person, fruit, or animal. We can also create data types that inherit these classes, like student class that inherits a person class, apple that inherits a fruit class, cat that inherits an animal class, and so on. So in short, in many cases, by creating a class, we are creating a new data type. It is important to note that each class contains not only a set of data that describes what the class is, but also a set of operations, we call them methods by the way, that describe what the class does, such as initializing, restricting, and manipulating its data. For example, if we wanted to create a data type called animal, we would define not only its characteristics, but also its behaviors. In Java, we call the characteristics instance variables and behaviors instance methods. So for this animal class, for its instance variables, we could have things like type, color, and diet. And for its instance methods, we could have things like um, <clears throat> eat, sleep, what, and poop, because that's what animals do, right? Okay, so now that we understand what a class is, we need to talk about what information hiding is. So, information hiding is not what most of you guys are thinking, because it's not when your girlfriend asks you what you did last night and you say, <clears throat> uh, I don't know, nothing. That's not information hiding. When we talk about information hiding in the context of programming, we are talking about a software engineering principle that we want to essentially focus on showing what a class does, but not how it does what it does, so that people who want to use our classes can use them easily without having to understand how it was implemented. For example, if you wanted to use a class called string, we don't want to have to understand the details about how the class was implemented to use the class in our software. Now, um, I know this was kind of a long intro, but we can finally understand what we mean by an abstract data type in the context of Java because in many cases, we have already been dealing with ADTs. An abstract data type is basically a data type that we create as programmers. This means that in Java, most of the classes that we write will fall under this category of ADT, like the special animal class, for example, that we created. There are a couple things to keep in mind when we create ADTs. First, when we create an ADT, we want to make sure we use information hiding first to hide our code complexity, and second, to secure our code. 
One of the ways to achieve this is to use private for instance variables and public for instance methods. Now that we understand what an ADT is and how we can create one, we can make use of them to organize our data better. Our goal is to organize the data in our software by first building well-designed ADTs that encapsulate data in one level, which can later be collected inside an appropriate data structure. Okay, before I end this video, I would like to briefly go over two things that were quite confusing for me when I was learning these concepts. The first question I had was, um, what is an abstract class? Well, it turns out that an abstract class is very different from an abstract data type. Although they sound very similar and they do in fact share a lot of similarities, we call a class an abstract class whenever a class has at least one abstract method, where an abstract method is a method that contains only its signature but not its implementation. So what does this even mean? We want to use abstract classes when we know for sure that the subclasses that will inherit our class will need certain methods, but the implementation of those methods will be unique to each subclass. So it wouldn't make sense to implement those methods in our class. This being said, the biggest difference between an ADT and an abstract class is that an abstract class cannot be instantiated which means you cannot create an object out of an abstract class, while the whole point of an ADT is to create objects out of them. And it makes sense that we cannot instantiate abstract classes because they are incomplete classes that depend on subclasses that inherit them to Im implement their abstract classes. Okay, so I understand what an abstract class is, but what is an interface? Okay, so if a class is made up of characteristics and behaviors, an interface is made up of only behaviors that are not even implemented. We can think of an interface as a template for a type. So what's amazing about an interface is that when a class uses an interface, it is considered to be of that particular type of that interface. If I create an interface called flyable that contains all the methods that flying animals would need to implement and I have an object of a subclass of animal called bird implement this flyable interface then it would not only be considered to be of type bird and animal but also of type flyable. This idea of one object having multiple types is called polymorphism. And this is a very powerful technique in object-oriented programming. So to summarize all this, when we talk about data types, we have primitive data types and we have reference data types. Oh, by the way, the difference between primitive and reference types is in memory. Primitive data types actually store the values in memory, while Reference types store the memory address in the memory that contain all of its data. Within reference types, we have class, and inside a class, we have abstract data type and abstract class. Notice how they do not overlap. And we have interfaces out here, since they are not considered to be a class, but a reference type. And I'm going to draw a line here to show that classes can implement interfaces. Okay, so I think that's it. I hope this diagram makes sense to you guys. And uh, I hope you guys learned something from this video. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe for more videos. Thank you.